All right, today we're looking at the search and find functions in Microsoft Excel. So we're doing both of these because they're very similar. The big difference between search and find is search is not case sensitive and you can use a wildcard such as a question mark. Find is case sensitive and you cannot use wildcards. So let's go ahead and just look at the difference and then I'll show you also the basics. So let's do search for example and we'll do smart and we'll search in B4. So you can see here we're looking at our find text, what we want to find, where we want to find it in, and then optional, we can start at a specific number. And this is talking about the characters within the text. And so you can see this returns one. And so even though we have smart not capitalized, it is returning position one. So it's returning the character where it starts. So in this case, it's starting in character one. So let's change this to phone, for example. Just so you can see that number. So that starts at character six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So P starts at six. All right, so let's go ahead and switch this back. And then we're gonna switch this to find. And you can see now we have an error even though we're searching for the same. So in this find one, we have to do uppercase S in order to find it. So find is case sensitive. Let's go back to search just for one more moment and look at this smart. Maybe we don't know what one of these characters are. We can replace it with a question mark and you can replace multiple characters and it will search. And so what each of these question marks does is it replaces a single character in your search criteria. So let's go ahead and just search for this across all of them, drag this down. You can see that smartphone is only found in this one. So let's just change this to something else for a moment. Let's do speaker and drag this down. You can see there it found it in here. All right, so that's the basics of search and find. Let's look at another use case. So we have these list emails here. And so we can use a find, for example, and look for an at symbol. And we can search in here. So if we look, it returns the number six. And so one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's returning where that at symbol appears. So now we have the position of the at, we can use this inside of a left function. And then let's put that C4. And then we can do negative one so we don't include the at. Well, let's go ahead and do it just like it is now. So it's including the at symbol. So if we do negative one, so then we're going to have six minus one equals five. And so it's going to return five characters and the left hand side of that C4. And so now if we drag this down, we can see it's returning everything before the at. So we can actually flip this around as well and get everything to the right of the at symbol. So we're going to do equals right. And then let's go ahead and take this text. And then what we need to do is subtract where the at is in the number of characters from the total length. And so to get the total number of characters in a string, we'll use this length function. And then what we'll do is we'll subtract, and then we can use find or search. Let's go ahead and use find for the moment. And we'll look for that at in C4. And then let's go ahead and check that out. So there is our Facebook. If we drag that down, we see now we're returning the domain for each email address. All right, so we're kind of close. We could use something like this to do some tests. So let's actually simplify this just for the moment. Let's delete these. So let's say we have something like apple.com over here, and I want to determine which of these contains apple.com. So let's do a search. And then we're going to search for that inside of here. And so this has a value. And so if we're going to drag this down, let's go ahead and lock this using dollar signs. So as we drag this down, that doesn't change. So we see we return this eight and six. However, this isn't a very friendly interface. So let's delete these just for the moment and do is number. 
And so what is number is going to do is determine if we have a number inside. So there's true, true. So it still isn't the best maybe that we're looking for. And so let's go one more step. So now that we have true or false, we can use an if function. And if it's true, let's do apple or not apple. And if we drag this down, now we can see a little more friendly. All right, so let's look at a more advanced feature here. And so I have the formulas in here, and then we're going to kind of walk through and build this. So we're going to delete it from here. And then I'm going to walk you through what these do, and then we're going to build it from scratch. So what we want to do is, in the end result, is extract the middle text out of this skew. So we have two hyphens beginning and end of that middle section. So we want to extract that from the middle. So logically what we're going to do, we need to determine where the start of this string is. So where that C is. So what we're going to do is find, look for that hyphen, and then add one. And that's going to give us four, which if you look in here, one, two, three, four. So four is our C. Next, we need to determine where our second hyphen is. And so in this case, we're going to use the optional parameter in find, which is where we want to start at. So the starting character. So if you can see this, we have a find nested within a find. So in this find, we're looking for a hyphen in that text. But that start number, we're going to use our original start number plus one. And so what we're doing in this, this is the same as this four here. So we could actually replace this if we wanted to. C15, and we still return the same thing. So this is basically the same function that we have in this one. But we want to start at four and then count forward until we find another hyphen. And so that tells us where our second hyphen is, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we have our C in our hyphen. So this point, we have our start number where our second hyphen is. And so from that, we can simply subtract the difference to determine the number of characters. All right. So that may seem very complicated. What we're doing is we're using this mid function. And so the parameters we can use that is our text. So we're going to use our original text in B15. And then we need the start number where we want to start, which is four or C, and then we determine how many characters we want to return from that. And so we want to return three, one, two, three characters. And so that's how we return that. All right, so now let's put it all together. So instead of rebuilding each one of these in its own column, let's go ahead and build the whole thing inside of our mid, because that's what we want to do at the end. We don't really want all these extra columns when I put it in one cell. So it's going to be a little tricky, but bear with me. We're going to walk through this step by step. So let's go ahead and open our mid function. And then we're going to pick our text. And then for our start number, we need the formula out of here. And so this one is pretty simple. We're going to do find that hyphen. And then that's going to be in B15 and plus one. So we're going to call it good for now. Let's go ahead and just put zero just so we can X out of that formula. So. The next thing we need is the number of characters. So this is the most complicated. So we need to return this three. But as you can see, this three is a combo of D and C. So this D is this find formula here. So let's just combine it in here. So here's the D part. And so we're still returning the same thing. Now we don't need this. And then we need to return our C15, which is here. So let's grab this formula. And let's now replace that. So now we have five. So let's go ahead and wrap ourselves in here and wrap this up here. And there we go. So we want to make sure that each find one is in its own here. So those plus ones aren't messing anything up. So now we have our number of characters here. So now we're going to take this whole formula, copy it, and then in our mid, we're going to replace our number of characters with this long formula. So it's a great way to put together longer formulas is to 
break it apart and then you can assemble like this and now we can just simply drag this down and like magic it pulls out that middle part of the skew into the cell just with this cool mid function with find functions inside of it. All right, that is it for today with the search and find functions in Microsoft Excel. Now, when you're looking at all this data and how this data is getting into Microsoft Excel, make sure you check out Coefficient if you don't have it already installed and use Coefficient to automate your Microsoft Excel by both importing data, adding different automations, as well exporting data to various data sources. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.